Today we're going to Japan and more specifically the Japanese East Coast where a terrible disaster happened in 2011. A disaster that resulted in almost 16,000 deaths and 2,600 missing people. And even though that in itself is horrible, the disaster could have been much, much worse than it was. Let's go back in time to 2011. On March 11th that year, a powerful earthquake hit the northeastern Japanese coast. It was an earthquake of magnitude 9, which means that it was really powerful. However, the earthquake was only the beginning of this disaster. Because of the earthquake, the ocean floor moved 24 meters horizontally and 3 meters vertically. And this release of energy pushed billions of tons of water. And this resulted in a tsunami that ruthlessly washed through the Japanese coast and hit the nuclear power plant Fukushima Daiichi. The power plant had automatic procedures that would kick in in case of emergency. And when the earthquake hit, they did just that. And the power plant's reactor shut down just like they were supposed to. Diesel generators kicked in to make sure that the power plant still had power and that the important cooling process of the power plant's reactors were still happening. However, the real problems didn't start until an hour later when the tsunami hit. Waves of 10 to 15 meters washed over the power plant and surged into the buildings that housed the turbines. And what was even worse was that the diesel generators and fuel tanks that were responsible for cooling the reactors were ripped away. And it gets worse. Since it was no longer possible to cool the reactors, the temperature in the reactor chambers increased tremendously and hydrogen gas quickly accumulated. The pressure increased and on March 12th at 3.36 in the afternoon, the gas in reactor chamber 1 exploded. After the earthquake and tsunami hit, the people at the power plant fought hard to stabilize, especially the reactors. But because of the natural disasters, it was difficult to reach the power plant with the right equipment. At this point in time, a large amount of radioactive material had already begun to leak out of the power plant. And the most urgent task at this point in time was to try to cool the reactors to avoid a complete meltdown of radioactive material. Because if that happened, the disaster would have been enormous. Firefighters and employees at the power plant fought day and night to stabilize the situation. And they came up with a pretty creative solution to cool the reactors and especially the exploded reactor one. The ocean was right next to the power plant. So they started pumping seawater and boric acid into the reactor chambers to cool it. And it did lower the temperature. However, Reactor 1 wasn't the only reactor that they needed to keep an eye on because a couple of days later, the same accumulation of gas that had happened in reactor chamber 1 happened in reactor 3 and 4, and they too exploded. This led to an even larger leak of radioactive material, which meant that a lot more people now had to be evacuated. At first, people were being evacuated in a radius of 10 kilometers from Fukushima. However, when the first and then second reactor exploded, this evacuation zone was further expanded to 20 kilometers. And then when the third reactor exploded, this evacuation zone was further expanded to 30 kilometers from Fukushima. The cooldown of the damaged reactors and the attempt to contain the radioactive leak continued in the days, weeks, and months following the disaster. The disaster happened at the beginning of March, and it wasn't until December that year 
that the Japanese Prime Minister declared the situation stable. This disaster at Fukushima Daiichi was very severe and it was categorized as a nuclear disaster on the same level as the Chernobyl disaster in 1986. And if it hadn't been for the people that desperately fought to get the situation under control, it probably could have resulted in an even larger explosion and leak of radioactive material. In addition to that, a strong southwards air current could have spread the radioactive leak directly above the capital Tokyo and the surrounding area where about 34 million people live. These heroic people have since been mentioned as the Fukushima 50. You know, the 50 people from Fukushima. Even though there were probably more than 50 people involved in getting the situation under control and more likely hundreds of people, but except for these Fukushima 50, we unfortunately don't know a lot of the other people involved. It is known that these people were employees at the company TEPCO, which was the company behind the Fukushima power plant, but their identities have been kept hidden. And actually, in Japan, these people that stopped the nuclear disaster aren't considered heroes at all. And rather, they're looked down upon because these people were employees at the company that is to blame for the fact that this disaster happened at all. Because the security at the power plant wasn't exactly at the level that it should have been. And even in some cases, security clearance it had been tinkered with. So because of that, a lot of the Japanese people don't like TEPCO and their employees, even though they help prevent this disaster from turning into something much, much worse. So that was what happened in Japan in 2011. And when we're on the subject of nuclear disasters, if you're interested in learning about the Chernobyl disaster, then take a look at the video that my co-host made a couple of weeks ago about this disaster. I'll link to it in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, then throw a like at it and subscribe if you aren't already. Also, if you have any ideas for any future videos or stuff you want to learn about, then let me know in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video. Unless you see my co-host, but you know, I'll see you soon.